Dr. Yashwan, postgraduate resident, Department of General Medicine, Vinayaka Missions Medical College, Karakul. For the poster presentation, I'm presenting a case of ganglioglioma of the parietal lobe mimicking hemiplegic migraine. I present a 19 year old male, second year engineering student, presenting with chief complaints of headache since four hours and weakness on the right side of the body since four hours. He was apparently asymptomatic four hours ago when he developed sudden onset, left sided throbbing headache. It was associated with vomiting and right upper and lower limb weakness with no aggravating and relieving factors. He was having similar on and off attacks for the past two years. During the attack, he has a history of unaware slippage of slippers from the right leg, difficulty in clearing the obstacles on the ground with the right leg, difficulty in getting up from the squatting position, difficulty in getting up from the chair, difficulty of unbuttoning and buttoning of the shirt with the right hand, difficulty in mixing the food, difficulty in combing the hair with the right hand, difficulty in lifting the right upper limb above the level of shoulder, difficulty in bringing the food to the mouth. There was no significant history suggesting of involvement of the sensory system, cranial nerves, autonomic nervous system, cerebellum and the higher mental functions. He had similar episodes in the past for the two years and was diagnosed with sporadic hemiplegic migraine prior to visiting us. He had no history of diabetes, hypertension, chronic kidney disease, coronary artery disease, bronchial asthma, tuberculosis, thyroid disorders, malignancy, or epilepsy. He was treated previously with sumatriptan and naproxen combination. Family history was not significant. On examination, patient was conscious, cooperative, coherent. He was moderately built and moderately nourished with no pallor, icterus, cyanosis, clubbing, chylonychia, lymphadenopathy or edema. Scalp, oral cavity, palms and soles, nails, genitalia were unremarkable. Pulse was 98 beats per minute, which was regular in rhythm and normal in volume. Blood pressure was 100 by 70 mmHg in the right upper limb in supine position. The patient was afebrile. Higher mental examination, the patient was right-handed. His GCS was 15 by 15. He was oriented to time, place and person. He had a normal attention, immediate, recent, remote, working, episodic, semantic memory were intact. Spontaneous, fluent speech with normal grammar and syntax and no word finding and initiation difficulties with sensible speech content. Comprehension, repetition, naming, reading, writing were intact. Frontal lobe testing was normal. On left parietal lobe testing, Patient was able to perform all the tests except for the sequential task. Patient calculation abilities were normal. There was no finger agnosia and no left to right dissociation. Right parietal lobe testing was unremarkable. Occipital lobe testing was normal. All the cranial nerves were intact on examination. Motor system examination. The bulk was normal. The tone was increased on the right upper and lower limb. Power on the left upper limb and lower limb was 5 by 5. In the right shoulder, the power was 4 by 5, right elbow 4 by 5, right wrist 3 by 5, right fingers 3 by 5, right hip 3 by 5, right knee 3 by 5, right ankle 3 by 5, right toes 3 by 5, right plantar response was extensor. Deep tendon reflexes on the left side were normal and on the right side were exaggerated. Coordination was intact on the left side and could not be assessed on the right side due to the weakness. Superficial, deep and cortical sensations were intact bilaterally. No cerebellar signs on the left side. On the right side could not be tested due to the weakness. No signs of meningeal irritation. Spine and cranium were normal. Cardiovascular examination S1 and S2 were audible with normal intensity and character with no murmurs. Respiratory system, bilateral air entry was present with normal vesicular breath sounds and no added sounds. Abdomen was soft, non-tender. There was no organomegaly nor any free fluid. A functional diagnosis of recurrent headaches associated with hemiparesis, ideational apraxia without sensory, cerebellar, cranial nerve and autonomic involvement with probable localization of the lesion to the subcortical left dominant parietal lobe, most probably secondary to a space occupying lesion was made. The differential diagnosis at this point were AV malformations, tumor, sporadic hemiplegic migraine. 
An MRI was ordered, which revealed a large cystic lesion, hypointense on flare with a hyperintense mural nodule within the left parietal loop. The lesion was causing significant compression on the left lateral ventricle and a midline shift to the right side. The lesion was measuring about 65 mm by 74 mm with a midline shift of about 10.3 mm. The rest of the brain parenchyma was appearing normal. An emergency neurosurgery opinion was obtained and the patient was taken up for left frontoparietal craniotomy with excision of the mass. Intraop findings showed a large cystic, large cyst with xanthochromatic fluid with a reddish vascular nodule. The nodule was identified and excised in toto. Post-op period was uneventful. Histopathology revealed polygonal cells presenting in small clusters separated by thin fibrovascular septa with the lymphocytes and no necrosis. On immunohistochemistry, the tumor cells expressed synaptophysin, neuron-specific enolase, CD56, and were locally positive for glial fibrillary acidic protein, GFAP. The morphology and immune profile was favoring ganglioglioma, WHO grade 1. This tumor usually accounts for 0.4 to 2% of all the intracranial tumors. Most commonly, it presents with seizure in about 90% of the cases and is most commonly localized to the temporal lobe. PubMed search for case reports on ganglioglioma revealed only two case reports till date with a parietal lobe localization. Since it's a rare form of intracranial tumor with a very unusual presentation and localization, we have opted to present this case. Thank you.